A very warm welcome back to Stone Valley for episode 3 with me, Mr. Seely P. It's 4.59, just before 5 o'clock. Our contract on field 10 that we took on for a local farmer is almost complete. The field is cleared. The contract is now sitting at 96% complete. Uh, that one there, which is great. Canola, we've delivered a load already. Now, I have got both of these full, 42,000 litres combined. I've got that full, 24, no, 25,000 litres, 25,000 litres. And this, I had to lease. I leased this simply because there was so much coming off that field. I was filling these up so quickly with three harvesters running. The harvester that I leased that I got from the farmer, plus our own two, um, I just couldn't keep up with it all. These were filling up so quick, so I thought, you know what, I'm going to lease this. Um, so that's what I did. What I'm going to start off with is, actually I think we'll start off with this. Yeah, 66,000 in this. So we've got well over 100,000 litres still sitting here. So I'm not sure how much of this it's going to take to fulfil the contract, the last 4%. And then anything over and above that, it's all going to be profit. Actually, I'm going to check. I've been coming up here every time, but I do this every time. I just have to check to make sure I'm at the right sale point because I've done it before. I'm pretty sure we all have at some point. In our excitement, <laughs> we've driven off to a sale point, unloaded, and then money started going up. You think, hang on a minute, what have I done wrong? And you're at the wrong sale point. So, at what point on this load will this switch over and I start making money? Or will it? Will it take all of this before the contract completes? Oh, blimey. I was convinced I was going to make an absolute ton on this. Come on, switch over, switch over. Come on, play the game. There we go. Right, now, we are on money making from this point on. Nice, and I've still got all the rest left. I am smiling from ear to ear. Um, yeah, now, I understand that whole concept that it may seem easy. <laughs> it may seem easy in that well, you're just, just making a ton of money. Just every single job you do, you're making a ton of money. Not a ton of money, and the, the money I'm making, like I've said before, is commensurate with the work you're putting in. Because I play on normal time, I can't remember what time I started that harvest, but I did have three harvesters running. It still took me ages and ages and ages, backwards and forwards, backwards and forwards, doing load after load after load. Um, this is unusual. I have said before, what normally happens is you normally double your money if you do a harvest contract. You can pretty much double your money. Um, this is unusual. I mean, to be fair, the contract does pay out 40 odd grand. So if we do hit 40 grand of profit, then I suppose we have technically doubled it. Well, that's another 28, so we've over doubled it already. <laughs> Okie dokie, and we've still got another 42,000 left to unload. So, um, yeah. Always be careful as well. Um, th this is a top tip. I always prefer to say top tip rather than pro tip. I know people have a tendency to put pro tip in the comments, and I'm, I've, that's been one of my... <laughs> it's, a, it's along the same lines as artisan. <laughs> if anyone remembers my artisan rant. It's a top tip. Top tip, it just helps out. Or just, here's a tip. I don't know. That's just me personally, of course. It's just... But, I think what we're going to do is probably have a bit of a breather. I've got to go back to the farm. Um, that as well. Spot that too. Because I've got um, all my machinery needs work, needs a bit of TLC, needs washing and cleaning. I've got fields now that need ploughing, or one field that needs ploughing, field eight. Oh, that is just, I mean, that is bonkers money off that. What's that? That's an extra 90 grand I just made, didn't I? First one was 20 something, the second one was 28. So we're looking at almost 50 grand maybe on that. Plus that, yeah, we're looking at about 90 grand. And then we go to the contract, actually, that will do. This is my point. 
if you complete the contract early <laughs> you get excited and go brilliant job done complete the contract get your payment and then realize that all the machinery that you'd borrowed from the farmer that was full of whatever you've got in them disappears because you've completed the contract and they've taken their machinery back so just yeah be warned <laughs> so uh yeah so I'm down to 34677 because obviously I, there was a leasing cost of 6487 for borrowing all their equipment. But what I've just made in that, worth every penny. Collect on that too, job done. So there are loads of cultivating jobs now. I do like the fact I often find on a lot of farms I've, I've worked on, um, you don't always get the cultivating jobs. It will often bounce straight from harvesting to sometimes on some maps you don't even get the sowing contracts come up. You don't always get ploughing ones appear, but I like the fact there's that rotation. We went through the phase of doing all the fertilising jobs because the fields needed fertilising leading up to them being ready to harvest. Harvesting jobs are now happening and now the cultivating jobs are coming up in preparation. There'll be sowing ones, I'm sure there was a sowing one further down, was that gone? There you go, sowing. Um, the sowing ones will happen, then we'll go back into fertilising contracts again, so there is that rotation round. Um, and I like that, I like that a lot. Um, so that's done. That needs to be returned to the store. We'll take this back to the farm. And I need to do some work. Um, I need to get my... Um, like I say, I need to get the machinery sorted. I need to get the tractor over into field 8. And we'll get on with our ploughing. Because that needs to be ploughed out. I am considering getting a cultivator and to p picking up some cultivating jobs as well. Because, again, it's all money in the bank. If I can help out locally doing different jobs I did have, it was one of those weird ones um, I say weird if that makes it sound horrible to the person that left the comment in, in so much as the suggestion was made of me doing a start from scratch, I don't know if I've mentioned this before a start from scratch series um, but, and this is where it got a little bit odd I was very limited to what I could do so I wasn't allowed to use government subsidy mods, fine, totally get that I usually only ever use those when I set the map up with a combination of government subsidy mods and then leasing and returning I get the map to where I want it to be for the start of a let's play generally speaking I don't cheat in money so I don't start normally a let's play with a million pounds in the bank normally I'll start with whatever the starting amount is whether it's a hundred thousand sometimes I've started on way less than that I have done let's plays in the past where I've done that whole I've moved my money over from a previous farm so if I've made X amount of money, I take that all with me because in the day, if I've earned that, why shouldn't I? Um, but I don't always do that. So, um, yeah, but then it, it then went on to say I couldn't do in game contracts, I couldn't do subscriber contracts. So, so then I thought, well, how do I make money? I mean, in the, the day, just turning the field, if you own a field or two fields, just turning those two fields. And I think it, it might have even suggested I use seasons as well. It would have taken years and years of seasons gameplay just turning the same couple of fields until I could make enough money. I mean, I know, you know I guess it's how the real world works, but a lot of farmers are, are diversifying these days and they are either setting up businesses whereby they take on other jobs around the local area so whilst they are farming, they do provide farming services to other farms. Um, for, for me personally, the case in point is flank farms. I've mentioned before flank farms. I don't put videos up very often. They're not far from where I live actually, just up, I said just up the road. I suppose if you're American, yeah, just up the road. It's like a 35, 45 minute journey. So yeah, it's actually just up the road. Um, and they've got a fairly small farm. They do mainly um, animal husbandry. And a lot of their farm work is done by local farmers that come in and they contract them in to do their mowing and baling and various different things because they don't have the machinery or equipment to do it. They're also not going to buy all of that machinery and equipment for the one time a year that they might do mowing and baling. So yeah, it, it is one of those things. You are going to pick up, you know, contracts in the local area if that's what you're setting yourself up as. And I will be doing that. Absolutely, I will be doing that. I'm going to pick up whatever contracts I can locally to build up my money until I get to a point where, and I've said this before, you always have it on whatever map you're on, whatever farm you're running, that tipping point. That tipping point 
where you're starting to make money of your own. Where you don't need to dip into doing contracts for local farmers because your farm's built up to a point where it's self-sustaining. Where you are now either running all of your fields to do your animal husbandry or your animal husbandry has reached a point where you're bringing in enough money on the sale of manure, the sale of milk, the sale of eggs, the sale, you know, whatever it is you're selling, that you then become self-sustaining. I'm not at that point yet. I'm not going to be for a long time. So, anyway, workshop trigger. I showed already just up there. My harvesters are all off the field. They're going to need to be jet washed. They're going to need to be gone through, serviced, grease circs all gone over. Just listening to farm dog going bonkers again. It's because my wife's working from home at the moment as well. And I said before, my daughters were all here. My wife started a new job, but can't actually travel into London. Her company that she's now working for aren't, um, they're not back in the office. So she's in that weird situation that a lot of people find themselves in during this, this, you know, this global situation. That she started a new job but hasn't actually been in the office <laughs> she's only met all the people um that she's now working with on calls on video conferencing on you know she hasn't actually been in the office so she's in the front room she's all set up in there i'm out here my daughter's at the dining room table because she's in the front room farm dogs decided that he needs to protect her from the world outside so anything that goes past the window he just goes bonkers at now just to protect my wife, which is lovely in a way, but incredibly frustrating when you try to record videos. So anyway, that all being said, I'm going to grab the tractor, I'm going to grab the plough, I'm going to go over to field eight, I'm going to make a start on that. Um, next test I'm going to do, now we're up to 368 grand in the old sky rocket. Um, I'm going to, going to, going to, sorry, very poor English. Um, let's have a look on the map. Because I want to do some alfalfa testing, and as I said, this is you know a bit of a pain because it's a double whammy. Although I'm pretty sure buying that for 361 is still cheaper than buying that alfalfa for 407. So what I might do is do a sale or return. <laughs> I still haven't got quite enough money to buy that though, have I? Oh yeah, 368, 361, just about enough. And do some alfalfa testing, but I might do that in the morning. So what I might do is pick up a couple of jobs overnight, although a lot of them are cultivating jobs, mm, to know, and then potentially buy that and then do some alfalfa. Because, again, a lot of you are probably way ahead of the curve on that and you've played on loads of maps where you've been running alfalfa, rye, triticale. I've done triticale and rye a bit on Geiselsberg when I was working there for Papa Farms, um, but I haven't really done since then, like on La Coronea, none of those. I haven't done it. I haven't touched alfalfa or lucerne. It was an RDC as well. I haven't done any of those. So alfalfa for me is new. Um, and a few people have commented to say what you can and can't do with alfalfa. Um, so I'm going to do some testing. Because I've, I've had just as many people ask me, how do you do alfalfa? As many as people have said, this is how you do alfalfa. So I'm going to do some testing of my own. Probably, like I say, in the next episode, we'll... Um, We'll get the alfalfa field, get over there. I'm going to do some cutting of it, some baling of it, windrowing, potentially try some tedding. Then we're going to look at options as to what we can then do with it. I'm going to try wrapping it. I don't think I can. I'm pretty sure you can't wrap it. I know loads of people are going to comment saying you can't. Um, that'll be in the. It'll still be within this episode. So actually, technically, you won't be able to comment until. Well, people generally do comment before they've watched the whole video. I know I do have quite a few comments. People will comment, say something, and then go. Oh, I should have waited till the end of the video. That's fine. Oh, I get it. It's always that knee jerk. You watch someone go, must comment immediately. This man is infuriating me. And then you find that I've actually done what you said I should have done in the first place. So, um, yeah. So I'm going to do a load of testing. And that's just my own peace of mind. That's not, I'm not saying people are lying. I'm not saying people are misinforming me. I'm not saying anything at all of the kind. But I'm going to do some testing myself. Now that looks to me to be uh, a custom custom plowing texture so what I'm going to do is make sure I go right up to the edges um, and I'm going to make sure I do the bit around the silo to get rid of that stubble from the two crops where there were two crops in the ground um, now I, I, in all honesty on this field other than that bit up, up by the silo 
where there's a bit of wheat mixed in with the rye. I didn't have a problem with this field at all. Um, I know a lot of the locals did say there are a few fields knocking around that have a couple of issues. Like I say, if you want to go down that route, wet spots, compaction, areas that you can't actually farm properly. Nudge, nudge, wink, wink. Um, but I, ha I really didn't have a problem with this. I suppose it depends because I was using a fairly small, I was using fairly small harvesters with fairly small headers. On some of the fields where you've got these bumps, and there are a few fields that have got bumps in them. It's actually pulling way better than I thought it was going to. Because you know I don't have the horsepower for this. This 145 horsepower tractor pulling a 180 horsepower requirement plough. And I wanted to go down this route as well. More of a chisel plough than a mouldboard plough. Um, again, just from the farmers I've watched, um, American farmers I watch online, and this is a generalisation, generally what I've seen is farmers in the US don't use mouldboard ploughs. Now that's not to say they don't. There are probably areas in the US that, where they do, because like I say, I don't know the entirety of the US. There are probably areas that do. Um, so I thought I'd go more down the kind of chisel plough route, plus this is cheap. It works well, it's six metres wide, yeah, it does the job. And that's what you need. So, um, yeah. So, if you've got a much larger header on a harvester, and you go over a lump or a bump, and it raises that header up, you've then got a section of field potentially 13 metres wide you've missed, as opposed to, with the headers I was using, a much narrower, smaller little blip. So I suppose the larger the header and harvester, the much larger the problem then seems to be if you do encounter an issue. So I, can't, I, yeah, I kind of understand why that may be the case. Anyway, this is going to take a while. Oh, that filled ahead of me. Is that potatoes in there? That's filled 29, isn't it? Can you imagine when the harvest job comes up for that? <laughs> That's absolutely bonkers, but... Ah, that's a good point, though. Yeah, I'm struggling a little bit with traction now. Um, if you haven't seen me do this before, and again, you shouldn't do it, because it, it shouldn't happen in the real world. If you've watched my channel for a while, you know what I'm going to do now. Now, like I said before, this plough, chisel plough, subsoiler, it actually comes under the plough section, not subsoilers. It's designed so that the shanks will, in the same way, go on the front or the rear. So I can put it on the front and I can push this, and this will do exactly the same thing, which is great. What you can do, which is not what you're supposed to do, is if you have got a low horsepower tractor and you're struggling a little bit for traction, if you put it on that way round, and again, this is not realistic in any way, shape or form, put it that way round, as you can see, the shanks are now facing the wrong way. They're facing backwards, so technically won't, shouldn't rip. They shouldn't do what they should, they're supposed to do. But here's the thing, they do. Um, so if you decide to go down that route, it means when you drop them into the ground and you pull, now it's, notice now I'm not going at 7 miles an hour anymore, I'm going at 10, because that thing will pull it, because it doesn't really register a horsepower requirement. It's now saying, yeah, I can pull that. No worries. I'm still getting my ploughed state, my tractor's not struggling. Um, so, yeah, you can go down that route if you want to. I mean, I'm going to go back to how it should be done. And again, you don't have to... I'll tell you what, that junction just up there, that's a real hot spot for accidents. Look, there's another one. Two cars, collision. I have to call the sheriff. That's what we need. On American maps, with the vehicles and stuff going around. We need someone to mod a, a sheriff's car. I know now on... Because on Sandy Bay, Oxford and David did the police cars. How cool would it be to have a sheriff going round? That would be brilliant, wouldn't it? Anyway. Enough of me. For a moment. Let's get on with this. So it's now I'm only going six and seven. Because now it's saying, oh yeah, this plough requires 180 horsepower. <laughs> I don't have 180 horsepower. So, I'm going to carry on. This is going to take a little while. I'm going to go back over to the field. What I might do is either get Carl or Sean to do the work over the farm and I carry on doing this, or vice versa, get one of them to do this. And I'll get all the machinery sorted out. 
I'll keep an eye on jobs board and if anything pops up that I think might be quite lucrative for overnight work we might pick up a few bits and bobs here and there and um, I'll see you in the morning for some alfalfa testing um, I do then need to sort out fertilising both these fields have been fertilised oh I've got to pick up all the, the grass oh yeah that's how things are oh blimey I'm not going to have enough money to buy that, that, that field am I to do alfalfa testing just suddenly realised because um, we want to have our silo built. The silo is going to cost me 60 grand. Um, it's, a bit, it's a bit you can't lease fields. That would be pretty cool. I think there's a mod on, on PC where you can. Um, but that would be pretty mint if you could lease a field. Because people do it all the time, don't they? I, re I really am going to stop talking now. How was that four times now I've said? See in a little while, and then I just think of something else to say. My name's Mr. Silly P, and I'm an addict. It's been about 25 minutes since my last fix, and I can't help myself. If any of you remember, if you have been long time subscribers, my Washo Let's Play, where I became mildly addicted to doing contracts, and I've talked about it already on this episode. Um, look, John Deere's made an appearance. Um, we are <laughs> we're doing a sunflower contract here on Field 11, which is mahoosive. Uh, let's have a quick look on the map. Yeah, Field 10, child's play compared to Field 11. Um, no, to be fair, this is um, sunflower harvest. Uh, obviously, we've got to cross the river and the other section there is going to have to be done too. This because I was thinking about we need to get a silo and then I want to sort out the alfalfa stuff this pays out 42 grand I'm going to take a hit on that because I've, I'm borrowing their equipment again but if the last contract we did was anything to go by we'll get paid out a decent chunk of money on this for extra crop and that kind of thing provided we get extra crop I'm really glad I didn't return this immediately I was going to return it and I didn't I might buy one of these I'm looking at my options I said in the last episode I'm looking at options for trailers um, yeah, I might go for one of those. I like the fact it's got a trailer hitch on the back as well, so you can daisy chain and you can add other, you know. So I've got my 24,000 litre one as well at the moment, so 25,000 litre. So I could hook that on it as well. I don't know. Just looking at options. This belongs to, like I say, this belongs to the farmer. That row's done, so we're now moving on to going that direction. Um, Ploughing is continuing. Um, Sean's on that over on field 8. And the contractors hopefully are going to come and put the, the multi fruit silo up. It's just, it's just a small extension one, it's not massive. Um, I'll show you which one we choose um, in the morning, but that's probably I'll probably see you when this harvest is done and we're selling everything the last bits anyway and completing the contract. And then I'll see you in the morning. I don't want this to take up an entire episode of me just harvesting. Why is it just doing that tiny little strip? That's weird. This guy here works for the farmer who I'm doing the, the job for with. In, yeah. It's all good. We'll get it done. Um, yeah, a Moline machine. I mean, I don't... Are they actually made... I know headquarters of John Deere is in Moline, Illinois. But I don't know... They've got factories all over the place, haven't they? Anywho, work to do. It has taken me some time. It's now one minute to nine at night <laughs> and we've just finished the harvest on field 11 of sunflower and we're kind of in the same position we were a little while ago. I still need to go into rehab for my contract addiction and we will get to that. Um, so here's where we stand, 95% complete. The last time one we were at 96 at this point but that doesn't matter. I've got a bit in the harvester, full load in the lorry, full load in the John Deere and Joskin combination. So, what we'll do is do this one first. As you can see, the money has gone down. The money has gone down because the silo company um, have taken the funds and they are building our silo over at the main farm, which you'll see in the morning. And hopefully by doing this, we should have enough money then to buy the alfalfa field for alfalfa testing 
and then we'll set it back again. I know that's kind of field flipping, but we're not doing the entire field. It is simply to do some alfalfa testing, and it's the only field we can really do. So, uh, right, that's that bit done. Let's put the pipe away. I dropped the header off a, a little way back. I think this is the point of bringing the entire thing with us. So, uh, I just didn't. Now let's jump into the deer. Forty-seven thousand litres in here. This should now take us over, shouldn't it? What are we on now? Ninety-six percent, maybe. And then, like the other contracts, be all gravy from here. So let's do that. Maybe not. Come on, click over. Click over. There we go. Contract is finished. We are now making profit, which means the 70,000 litres wall that we've got in the other uh, the other trailer is all ours. <laughs> Excellent. Let's pull that to one side. Lights off. Plus, we've got the contract money on top. So, um, happy days. do this. Man, this is going to be a big... So we've had seven grand already. And it just keeps on going. Wow! This is a lot of extra crop to have. Not knocking it. What? So eighty. So we're about eighty-eight grand. <laughs> we're at eighty-eight grand already. And then what we'll do is click onto there. Another thirty-five on top of that. There's some maths involved in that. It's a lot of money. <laughs> It'll come up on the screen probably if I remember. Um, so let's collect on that. Um, so we've got a load of cultivating jobs. There are a couple more harvest ones I'm not going to touch now. It's late. I'm heading off to bed. We're up to 421,000. That includes the money having come off for the silo extension, um, which is absolutely fantastic. This trailer will go back to the store, and this time I really will see you in the morning. Um, and I don't doubt we're probably going to have more fertilising jobs and all sorts of stuff will be available by then. Um, I've just got to... I need a patch. I need like like a nicotine patch. I just need one for contracts that you can just put in your arm <laughs> to stop you taking on contracts. Um, yeah, so we've got a seed our fields as well. We've got you know we've got a whole load of stuff to do in the morning, but I really want to do the alfalfa testing first. See you in the morning. Right then, 6.47 in the morning. <sighs> right, that was a late old night with a load of work. There's our new silo. All of our machinery is back. Everything's been checked over. Everything's been looked after. Like I say, it's not a particularly large one. That's our normal silo. And this is a multi-fruit. Weirdly, I placed it and thought what I'll do is extend the grass out a little bit so our grass bit comes out here around it. It says I don't own this land. <laughs> Everything else around it I do. I own the field, I own the property, all the rest of it. But apparently this bit here I don't own. Don't know why. Um, this is from... Um, under silos. If you've got it installed, of course. And it's... Uh, which one is it? This one here. Small multi-fruit silo extension. 65 grand to buy and it cost me exactly that. There was no landscaping fees. Perfectly flat for a 75,000 litre capacity. Um, and what that should now do is mean that the capacity of that, which I think is 100,000 litres, 
I can put 100,000 litres of all the various normal crops, or actually up to 175,000 litres now, but it does mean I can put additional crop types, all the multi-fruit crop types, up to 75,000 litres in here, because that's kind of joined it up. Um, which means that the straw of the field can now be collected, and I can put loose in here as well, which links in very nicely with why I want to do the alfalfa testing this morning, because part of the alfalfa testing is going to be taking some alfalfa to the bunker silo to see if I can put it into the bunker silo to see if I can compact it. Now again, there'll be loads of you shouting at the TV saying, no, you can't, and you will be commenting at this point um, because you already know the answer. I don't, and I'm going to test it. So, yeah, thank you for your comments, if you are commenting, but I'm still going to test it. Um, so I'm going to need a loading wagon. So when I've got the loading wagon and I do that bit, I can then come over here, use the loading wagon to collect all this, and then we're sorted. What it'll also mean is when I then sell the field back again, the alfalfa field, we've got enough money to buy our next new tractor. That won't be in this episode. I'm going to get another case, and I'm going to kind of go up a little bit in the uh, in the bracket. I'm not going straight up. I'm not jumping to a Puma or an Optima or anything like that. You'll see. But the horsepower will go up, which means we'll have two tractors, one with a slightly higher horsepower, which will give me some more options with regard to seeding and that kind of thing. Although I am still thinking the John Deere seeders are the best option at the moment for for value and whatnot. So I'm going to go and grab the um, tractor. I'm going to go and grab the baler. I'm going to grab the bale wrapper. And then I'm going to go up to the store and we're going to get ourselves a front mower. And then at some point, we're going to get ourselves a loading wagon. Not buy, we're just going to lease one because we don't need to buy one at the moment. Because um, I'm pretty sure, as it stands, like I say, um, I'm pretty sure the alfalfa is not going to be the crop I need. I'm going to need grass. So, field eight. The reason I'm doing this now as well is because I need to start seeding. I don't want to put alfalfa into field eight and find it's actually a crop I can't really do very much with. So, if I find that it's actually not what I was hoping for, then I'll just grass field eight. I'll just just that one. There we go. Um, yeah, so what I'll do is then I'll grass field date, and that can be our grass field. I know there are bits of grass around the edges of some of the fields and stuff like that, but I want a dedicated grass field. Um, so up to the store we go. We'll take all this. We'll grab a front mower. Whether it will operate, just have the horsepower to run everything, I don't know, but we'll, we'll try. We'll do our best. So like I say, we're combining quite a few tests in one here. I know I know it'll mow. I think it'll mow. Um, I say I know it'll mow. I'm, I'm kind of 80, 70, 60% sure it will definitely mow. Um, and it will leave a windrow or scattered or whatever it's going to do. And I'm, I'm almost convinced it will TED. Oh, that's what we need to test as well. So maybe I'll grab a, I'll lease a, a little TED and we can test that too. But I'm pretty sure you can then only use it for feed. Um, you can't do anything else with it. That's what we're going to be testing. So they'll be wrapping, they'll be bunker silo testing with it. Um, yeah, we'll kind of go from there, really. All good. This is another one of those videos. It's taken me way longer to record. Our oh, farm dog is driving me mad again. Absolutely bonkers today. What is the matter with Every time I open my mouth, he starts. Got a funny feeling, my wife's going to lock him out of the front room in a minute. Anyway, that's <laughs> all that being said. <laughs> oh, man. I'm going to go and collect this fertilizer as well. Into the store menu. Over to tools, over to mowers. Now, Options for this again, I could go bigger. I could go for a three a three point six meter disco. I could go I might go for the Vicon actually. Um I've used the Pottinger Novacats quite a lot. I've used used the modded Novacats quite a lot. The Varia. Um I'm only going for a single mower at the front at the moment. I'm not going for a disc mower or anything like a disc bind type mower. Um simply for the reason I need it on the front because I'm going to be running the stuff behind it. So I think we'll go probably for that. And we'll get it as a Vicon, I think. Yeah. Now, are we going to buy it? Or are we going to lease it? We'll lease it for the time being. So I need as much fundage as I can for doing other jobs and bombs and bits and things. Oh, yeah, the field would be quite a different. I bought the field, wouldn't it? 
otherwise I can't use it. But I say, the reason I'm going to buy the field then give the field back is because it is linked to a field that has contracts on and I want those contracts to still be available at some point. And the other field that's got alfalfa in it um, is more expensive, so I'm not going to bother with that one. So this is our, our train. Vicon, Case and Coon. That sounds like a really dodgy set of solicitors, doesn't it? Vicon, Case and Coon. Attorneys of Law. So, build... Not this one. In all honesty, what I would normally do, and what I've done in the past, is testing and stuff like this, I would do off screen. I wouldn't be necessarily doing it on camera, but again, quite a, people, a lot of people have asked me, you know. I've had people just specifically saying, can you do a video on alfalfa? And I thought, well, I don't want to do just a dedicated video on alfalfa, but I can certainly throw it into the mix as what we're doing now. Actually, I'm probably going to be up the other end, don't I? Because the bunker silo or the biogas plant is over there. I don't want to cut grass here. Then have to take it all the way, all the way over there. So as far as I'm aware, like I say, I'm pretty sure alfalfa, generally speaking, alfalfa slash lucerne, um, is grown as a forage crop. It is, it is grown primarily as a feed type crop. So this is the field we need. So let's go back into here, over to here, we want that one there, still got it in it, that, that, so for 361 grand we can buy that plot. But don't worry, because we can sell it back again afterwards. So we're all good. Now, that just doesn't matter where I come into this one, does it? So what we're going to do, turn that on, drop that down, we're going to turn that on, drop that down. Because we'll know straight away if we can bait it. And then what we'll do is we'll switch to that. Is that really turning on or does that just do its thing? It needs to be unfolded though, doesn't it? So let's unfold it and let's see what happens, shall we? Right, so it's coming up as grass. Now this is where I find it weird. Because surely surely if it's registering there is grass it's not saying alfalfa so if it comes out the back as a grass bale why wouldn't it wrap because it's not saying alfalfa down the bottom it's just saying grass and we are mowing so we are now in the process of mowing baling and then potentially wrapping but it may not so well, that's the point of the test just to see and the, the tractors are having no problems at all with regard to horsepower i thought we might have an issue with this I've got to be careful. Okay, so I'm going to go off the end here onto actual grass. So let's switch to that. Did that just turn off? Yep. Water power requirement has dropped. Should have lifted that really. Let's get onto the road. Ooh, it's interesting. It kind of leaves it in. Although I'm picking the grass up, it kind of leaves it in a swath type situation already. Ooh. Turn that back on again. There we go, there's our first bale. So, let's open it up. See, that should just be a grass bale, shouldn't it? It's picking up and it's wrapping it. It's wrapping it, people. At this point, I'd like to interject during editing to reiterate the point that you're all probably thinking, Miss Silly Pete is an idiot. Um, I do realise in a minute. Uh, <laughs> watching this back is painful. Um, I, what can I say? Oh, here would be a great idea. At this point, if the idiot in charge actually cl <laughs> closed the baler. <laughs> so I was actually picking up, um, and the great thing is as well, being a grass, I'm driving over it with crop destruction on, and it's not destroying the grass. Because I just suddenly realised, oops, I'm driving across the crop. Um, I'm not. So, let's close that down. 
drop off that bale. We can do that. We are making silage bales with alfalfa. Ah, oh, hang on a minute. Ah, no. I know what's just happened. Because when I did that first strip, I must have caught grass from the edge. Because that now says alfalfa windrow. It doesn't say grass. So as opposed to the last one that said grass, this one doesn't. Oh, blimey. Oh. It's that baler curse, isn't it? Doing a bale of whatever the last thing left in it. That is going to be a problem though, isn't it? If you're doing... Um, why is that now not... Oh, what is wrong with me? Turn the mower back on. Muppet. I'm having a nightmare. So like, no. Ah, right. That's going to be a problem, though, isn't it? Because if you do put um, alfalfa on a field and you've got a grass border, when you are cutting this, if you go too close to the edge, you are going to get grass caught up in there, aren't you? Oh, that's not going to work now. Because that, that wrapper now won't take an alfalfa windrow. This is why we do the testing, people. And that's why, with rigorous testing, comes replication of results. Because, this very reason that... Oh yeah, different colour, isn't it? Look at that. Oh, there's all stuff in it too. This is new for me. This is my first alfalfa bale. Ooh, look at that. So it's kind of... The net still was round the outside, but look in the inside, little flower bits in there too. That's rather fancy, well that's not going to pick it up is it, so that's no good. Um, no, bale type won't be supported now. Boo! Okay, well what I can do now is Safe in the knowledge that that's not now going to work. Let's turn that off. Lift the pick up. And disconnect that. Let's go to that. Turn that off. Lift it. Right, so. I really am sorry. That, you know what I <laughs> All the people that said you can't wrap alfalfa. Thank you for your comments, you were absolutely correct. <laughs> oh. So what I'm going to do now... ...is just mow. Now I don't know if this is normal with alfalfa, like I say, this is my first time doing alfalfa. So I don't know if this, what's left over, is a standard um, alfalfa residue or whether this is a custom one that Lancy Boy's done, I'm not too sure, but... We don't need a lot of this, in all honesty, probably just one row, um, and we'll go and grab a loading wagon. Actually, I'm going to do a couple of rows, because what I need to do is grab a tedder as well. Um, so I'll grab a tedder. Yeah, look, that was where I went wrong. This was where it all went horribly wrong, because I started here. The mower cut this bit, which was grass, threw grass into the baler. So then anything else I did, the baler was saying, no, this bale is going to be grass. That's where I got my skewed result from. So if that's the case, because these are now alfalfa wind rows, when I collect them, assuming of course the loading wagon will even collect them, should do, um, that's why the bunker silo won't take them, because it's not registering as grass or chaff. I suppose the other way of doing it, if you want to do it in bunker silos, is using a whole crop header for a forage harvester, whole crop in the alfalfa and it coming out, assuming it does come out as chaff and it doesn't come out as, um, as alfalfa grass or, you know, in which case, 
you could, I suppose, that way round still get alfalfa to go into a bunker silo, but that would involve buying forage harvesters and all crop headers and all that kind of stuff as well, which I don't really want to be doing at the moment. And two rows will be just enough. Problem is it does mean I've now got two bales, like one wrapped and one I can't do anything. Well I can do, I can still sell it I guess. Right, let's lift that, fold that, grab my machinery. Right, I'm going to whiz back over to the store, I'm going to grab a loading wagon. Something that only needs to be a small loading wagon, I'm going to go mad. I haven't got a huge amount of straw, I don't think, to clear. And I certainly haven't got a lot of grass to test. Oh. Annoying. That bell's in the way now. Hold that away. Can I roll around that bale? Not really. Not without damaging everything. I'll just bounce that over. Oh no, I should be able to move that There we go. Right. Take this back and I'll go and get a load of my can see you in a minute. And so arriving back at the field with nothing but bitterness and disappointment in my heart. I've got the Troutwind Zalon 2501. I've got a Vicon Fanex um, 604. Forgot the number for a minute there. Um, Tedder. I'm going to do the pickup first. So we'll turn that on. Drop that down. I'm assuming this is going to pick up with Alfalfa. There you go, alfalfa windrow. That would probably already tell me that's not going to go into a bunker silo. But again, it does tell me that you can use it as a forage crop. So as far as feeding animals, whether it be sheep or whatever, you can absolutely use it. But it's not going to be any good for silage. Uh, which is fair enough. I'll get to the end of this row. I don't actually know why I'm bothering to wrap the rest of it. There's no point. don't need any more to do the next bit. What I'm going to do now is drop that off because of the bunker silo at the biogas plant is just there. There is an addition to that, an addition that I put on there before I even started the let's play, and that was um, a manure buy point um, that exists at the um, biogas plant. Just in case, people will often bring their manure and stuff to uh, sell there. Oh, that's what I was going to say, the biogas plant. Just the biogas plant does potatoes that was i started off saying something about that a little while ago didn't i and i didn't get any further with it uh if we go down to biogas plant which is the third one right I'll go across that was weird um yeah biogas plant potatoes and sugar beet it will take there as well 900 dollars for a thousand liters that's double what regular silage will do so again, I think I did it on Sussex Farms, doing a small crop, not a large one, because I did that before and it was ridiculous, of potatoes or sugar beet could make you a tidy bit of money at the biogas plant. Could make us a tidy profit. So potentially, if I took on one of those potato or sugar beet harvests, unfortunately the fields are rather large and it would take me quite a long time, the excess that we have been getting on every... every um, Every harvest job we've done, the excess that we get to keep or sell, we could sell there at the biogas plant and make even more money than if we sold it regularly. So, that might not be a bad idea. So, next bit of testing with our, with our alfalfa is for tedding. And yes, we can ted alfalfa and get alfalfa hay. So again... If you want to use alfalfa hay. Now I would imagine. Again, oh man, that's, that's further testing required, isn't it? I'm assuming because you can use this as a forage crop. Oh, there's no need to assume. What am I talking about? Let's have a quick check. No, I don't have the time. Let's go to animals. Feed mixers. Ah, oh, that's interesting. None of the standard in game feed mixers say. They take the alfalfa. Do any of the modded ones? Have we got any modded ones? Hmm. So potentially using alfalfa for total mix ration is a no-go. I did wonder. I, th I thought, well, maybe you could do total mix ration. 
with alfalfa grass and hay. It doesn't look like it though. Because if we go to the loading wagons, if I show you the loading wagons, the loading wagons have all got the alfalfa kind of symbol there, grass and hay. So the loading wagons will pick them up, but the mixer wagons don't have that symbol. So I'm assuming you can't use alfalfa, whether it's in its grass form, or it's only hay you'd want to use it, wouldn't it? And it's hay form for total mixed ration. Which means that it is really only for sheep for the hay, sheep for the grass, and potentially cows for the grass. Um, I suppose you do hay as well. Okay, well that's that bit of testing done, so we can drop that off. Uh, right, biogas pump. Let's. Well, this hasn't panned out the way I thought it would. I mean, you know, honestly, actually, it probably has panned out the way I thought it was going to. Initially, I was uncertain whether any of this would would work. Would would work? Would work properly? Um, I think that initial reaction of I've got a glass bale um, it just then petered out into into what you sense from me now. Whether it will unload it or not, I don't know. Whether it will register it or not, we will see. Uh, this action cannot be performed here. Let's open up that menu, like so. We are definitely in a fill level chaff, compacting at zero. But again, doesn't look like it. The other way of absolutely checking that again is to go into our menu. Go to our placeables, go to silos, and go across to a bunker silo. Yeah, it just shows grass and chaff as being the things that that will take. It doesn't say anything about alfalfa. Is there a modded one in here that came as part of... no. Maybe I dreamt that. Probably. I do that a lot. Uh, yeah, so no, you won't take it either. So it can't be used for silage in that respect. Okay, well... That's the alfalfa testing done. Um, we have proved that it's um, fairly limited in its uses. In all honesty, had it been an alternative to grass in all respects, that you could silage it and then you could, you know, bunker silo it and maybe use it for top mix ration as well, that would have been absolutely worth doing fields and fields of alfalfa or something different. But in all honesty, I am gutted because I did. I wanted to do alfalfa as a crop, but I really can't see much point. Right, what I'll do now is tidy this all up and then we'll head over to the farm. We'll use this loading wagon and get the straw swaths off the field. And then we can look towards what crop's going to go in the ground next because we need to sort out cedars and things like that. Um, yeah. Back over at the main farm. I'm now collecting up the straw swaths that were left on the field from when I did the perimeters and when I wasn't sure how much I'd need to get my 50 bales, so I've got a load spare. My new multi-fruit fruit silo will only hold 75,000 litres, so I think this holds 23,000, I think, the um, Zalon loading wagon. So I'll grab what I can, fill this up, I'll take the first load and unload it. And then I'll carry on going until I either run out of straw in the field um, or I fill it up. And then the rest will be either cultivated or seeded back into the ground, because I don't need any more than that. Not at the moment anyway. If we do move forward with plans which are afoot, um, then potentially we're going to need a load more later on down the line. But hopefully later on down the line we'll have bigger machinery, higher horsepower tractors. We'll be able to do it on a much larger scale and make it a lot easier. There we go, 23,000 litres, pickups up. Let's take it back into the yard. Well, you know, the alfalfa testing didn't work out how I thought it was going to in so much as... Um, some of the food type crops the silage stuff was how I expected it how I thought it was going to be from comments left and just from the kind of looking at the machinery available and what they can and can't do I thought that would probably be the case so it is what it is um, yeah I've got not a lot else I can say so next episode we are going to be looking at seeding we need to get some seed in the ground so we're going to need a seeder seeders and probably like I say looking at getting a larger tractor Actually, now we don't need that field. Let's go. I'm going to get it right one day. 
back into there that that sell our money's back in so that now unloads into here So I'll carry on doing the rest. What we can do is check across here, go to our straw, and as we can see, we're up to 22,999. We've lost a litre somewhere of 75,000 litres potential in there. So we can put all our forage stuff in there up to 75,000 litres as well. And with that, we have come to the end of this episode. Another one bites the dust, um, but we are... We are improving. We are gradually increasing stuff. I'll like say next episode, new tractor. Um, I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you are enjoying it. If you are, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do, as always, thanks for watching. <laughs>